In space, no one can hear you scream. In 1979, director Ridley Scott and a little-known actress named Sigourney Weaver introduced audiences to this phrase and to a unique brand of terror. Hi, I'm Ron Perlman, one of the stars of Alien Resurrection. And in the next half hour, we'll take you behind the scenes of the rebirth of the Alien series. You'll meet the cast, see how they create the creatures and the visual effects, and we'll explore just what it is about the Alien series that thrills and terrifies audiences around the world. Perhaps the greatest icon in the Alien films is Lieutenant Ellen Ripley. So the question you're probably asking is, how do they bring Ripley back? She died in the last movie, right? One of the hallmarks of great science fiction is its ability to predict future worlds and technologies. Well, in the past year since production began, cloning has become quite the international news story. Interestingly enough, in Alien Resurrection, Ripley returns as the result of a military cloning experiment. These were very, very hard to come by. So was our cargo. Whatever you got going on here ain't exactly approved by Congress. It's a military operation. Really? Something has gone wrong in the cloning so that she's had a sort of genetic mix with the alien, and there's this unease about how much she is of which, and where her loyalties lie. You're gonna make us all very proud. She can't believe she's back. She knows what's gonna happen. She knows what we're up against. Things have changed a great deal since your time. I doubt that. Well, it won't make any difference. You're still gonna die. She is part of an experiment to see if aliens can be used for military purposes because the only DNA of the aliens exists in her blood. Well, she's not really Ripley. She's Ripley Plus. It's not just her. It's her and the combination with the alien that's inside her. Come on now, give me the ball. the story of her and the group of basically smugglers who come to the ship with some contraband cargo that the government needs. The crew of the Betty is a group of sort of guns for hire. There's Jonner, Christie, Elgin, Hillard, Call, Vries. We will do anything for money. Nice welcome, Perez. Are you afraid the six of us are going to hijack your damn ship or what? They're just delivering some cargo. They make the delivery, spend a couple of days on the, the big mothership, and all hell breaks loose. The great part of the script is that we get them out of space and we are moving toward Earth. Any serious problem in the ship autopilots back to home base. And you were planning on letting us know this? Nobody asked. What's home base? Earth. Ripley is so strong in these films that you have to have somebody as strong in another way. And I think that's what Winona is. You're gonna kill me or what? There's no point, is there? They've taken it out of you. Where is it? Is it on the ship? You mean my baby? I never even thought I'd get a chance to meet her, let alone act with her, let alone be in an alien movie with her. She plays someone who's very passionate, very idealistic, the way Ripley used to kind of be. It's actually very moving, the relationship between the two of them. It's not like a buddy movie at all. Winona is such an amazing actress. She's so intuitive and so strong. What I really liked about the character of Call was that she's not just a shoot 'em up character at all. She's really humane. He is conducting illegal experiments. He's breeding some I sort of. Listen to me. Home. He is breeding 
an alien species. The big thing on the set, you know, can you believe we're working with Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> we're an alien. Ridley Scott, James Cameron, and David Fincher, the visionary directors behind the Alien series. And now Jean-Pierre Jeunet, director of Delicatessen and City of Lost Children, joins that select group with Alien Resurrection. The reason the series seems to work is that they always pick a very good, brilliant young director who takes the alien elements and makes them his own. I thought you were dead. Yeah, I get that a lot. When you look at his films, you really come to understand that he is one of the few directors that has a real unusual point of view. And it's very different from American action movie. It's much darker and scarier. The lights go out, an alien bursts onto the screen, and you, the viewer, scream and recoil in terror. What makes an audience respond to a frightening image? Why do we love to be scared at the movies? And how do the filmmakers behind the Alien series create the fear that grabs a hold of you and won't let you go until the credits roll? Let's take a look back at the Alien series and its unique effect on people. As a fan, as somebody who grew up with the Alien movie, it's my responsibility is to scare myself and excite myself as much as possible so that the real diehard fans can appreciate how much further we've taken it without corrupting it, and then people who've never seen it can just have a great, you know, scary, exciting time. movies all work to the degree that they are successful on, on playing on basic direct human phobias. Fear of little scuttling things, fear of insects, fear of suffocation. There's a collective thrill it's when you're sitting in the dark, with a, especially with a theater full of people, and there's a shared reaction to something. And so when we are excited or frightened for a long period of time, it kind of starts to feel good. Going on a roller coaster is a catharsis. It's a safe way of experiencing it. fear. I think it's uh, exactly the same as the spirit of adventure. You climb mountains knowing that you're going to be scared. People love to spend money to be scared witless. We live in a world that cushions us from the primeval reality of survival on a day-to-day -day basis. Certainly, to be scared has been part of the human nature since its very beginnings, you know? To fight a lion is to be scared. 20,000 years ago, we developed the fight or flight response um, to keep us away from saber-toothed tigers and, and mastodons and things like that. In a scary movie, people will go through fight or flight. I remember as a kid, I would duck down behind a seat. The genes, that whole kind of software that's deep in there in our genetic makeup, doesn't get exercised on a daily basis like it did back in the, when we lived on the veldt or, or in the woods and a, a bear or, or, or a mountain lion could jump out at any moment. This visceral experience of sharing these horrible nightmares on the screen with total strangers and screaming your head off and then laughing your head off the next second for screaming a second before. I think that's part of the appeal of horror films. The fear of being smothered or being without air is one of the things that, um, as a child, is most frightening. Yeah. Physically, when people are frightened, um, their palms sweat. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Please. The blood rushes out of their fingers and their outer extremities. Get you out of here. I start to feel cold. We gotta get her out of here. What's going on? Convulsion! And they can feel a little faint, a little dizzy. Get back! Get back. A nice way to be able to go and say, I know these demons are gonna frighten me, but I also know it's on the screen, and I'm gonna get up and finish my popcorn and be able to go home. All of the Aliens films have really been um, kind of spam in a can movies. You've got these people, and they're locked in a steel can, and they can't get out. <laughs> We're shown the wonders of space, but behind those wonders is this really horrible place that we don't know about. Alien life form. It's been dead a long time. 
The alien itself, that was a horrific creation when that thing first appeared on the screen. I mean, what was that? It has teeth, and it has even more teeth behind those teeth. So there's something so primevally terrifying about it. The last glimpse that you have in life if you get eaten by a predator is the teeth. Ridley Scott made this film that just stunned the world, and I wanted to make a film like that. I was so impressed by the world that he created. In the first, the space is endless. The space is vast. In Alien 2, brilliantly, they did the very opposite. I'm telling you, there's something moving in, it ain't us. He enclosed the space. He made it very claustrophobic. They're all around us, man. Jesus. Maybe they don't show up on infrared at all. He took all the elements of science fiction, horror, and action, and he put a unique spin on them. Let's rock! It's basically a war movie almost in space. In Aliens 3, we come to find out that she's been impregnated. I'm telling you, it's here. Here and get that foolish woman back to the infirmary. It was never meant to be like one and two, and I think that was the exciting thing about it. God, you go to the film thinking, Okay, I dare you try to scare me. I don't think of it as Alien 4. I really think of it as Alien Resurrection. I mean, you, like, ran into these things before. Yeah. What did you do? I died. So much of it is original, while the spirit of it is very much a cross between the first and second. Ellen Ripley died trying to wipe this species out. For all intents and purposes, she succeeded. I'm not anxious to see her taking up her old hobby. One of the most important elements in creating fear in the Alien series is the music. The composers of the four movies utilize a full arsenal of orchestral sounds to instill terror and tension in movie audiences. Jerry Goldsmith's score in the first film was very eerie and somber. Then they pumped up the volume in the second film. James Hornick came up with a real action-packed score. And Elliot Goldenthal's music in the third one was somewhere in between. When I first saw Alien, I was terribly frightened with it. Which is good, because that helps when I have to sit down and write the music for it. My first approach was to make the score a bit more romantic than one would think. For Alien 3, what Fincher and I were trying to arrive at was an environment which was the character. <laughs> so as soon as he walked into that movie picture, as soon as you saw it coming up, you said, I'm sorry, you go for popcorn, you know? I'll stay here and be scared. This is such a classy series. It's such a magnificent pinnacle of science fiction terror. We have to be real with the audience and bring them into the terror in a way that is unexpected. have these rods that you rub and they squeak and groan. We're gonna rub a super ball on a gong here. Just a regular old super ball. And you get some uh, pretty weird sounds out of this.
It looks kind of almost silly when you do it, but then you, you work into the score subtly and it becomes quite ominous and terrifying. Another hallmark of the Alien films are great stunts and action sequences. For Alien Resurrection, one of the most challenging scenes required that the cast and crew spend 23 days shooting in an underwater tank without scuba gear. That's a big breath. There was a whole process of training the actors to work underwater. And then, of course, there was the issue of having to work within a set that's submerged totally in water. Are you ready for us to go down? They took me into the pool, and they took me into this horrible, dark kitchen with these spiky things all over, and they told me what I had to do, and I said, I'm terribly sorry, but I really know that I can't do what you want me to do. No, I'm afraid of not no, I'm being dark. I'll do my best. It was like the worst experience of my life, hands down, I think. And I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Action, action, action. Right, look over your right shoulder, go, go, go. We set up uh, what's uh, called a hookah rig, and basically that's a long air hose which is connected to an air tank above the surface, and the actors will go on frame right and breathe, and they'll try and relax and normalize their breathing so that they can hold their breath for a sufficient amount of time in order to cross the scene. Unless you're specifically called in to do something, you need to stay out of the water because this is a kind of a small environment where we want to keep everything clear and the only bodies in the water are either you're actively working on the shot or it's a safety diver with oxygen available for the actor. So you have to hold your breath for uh, at least 30, 40 seconds, but then you have to swim, so you're expending energy. When you're ready. I'm ready. Ernie would get on and then he'd start yelling, you know, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then he'd say, action, 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 go, go, go. Action, 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 go, go, go. Bubble, 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 bubble. Good, good, keep going, keep going. And so you were there, you didn't have air, you had to give up your air, then you had to take your mask off so you couldn't see anything. Uh, 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 uh. And that was the biggest challenge, because you can get an ear infection, eye infection, embolism, all those things go with water. So it's, it's actually quite dangerous. The minute I'd say cut, Three safety divers go right up to and give them air. Cut, 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 get her air, get her air, get her air. Take her up to the triangle. It was pretty disgusting. Action! There was just like really foul stuff. And we're looking for a thumbs up on everybody. Thumbs up on A, thumbs up on B. I got tangled up at one point. Something had happened and I had got connected to the wire and it, I kind of got slid back on the wires. Four. It was cutting through my leg and I was pulling at that and so I had no air and I was, I, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get loose, I was sort of stuck there. Go in and help them, give them air, give them air. What happened guys? I didn't take any of the precautions I needed to take. And I was making the signal to, to cut, I can't go on because my eyes were literally bulging out of my head and my, I thought my brains were gonna explode. Action, 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 action! Shot her! Nobody saw me doing the cut. So they yelled action, and for some strange reason, I guess it's 22 years of training, I went on and did the take in this incredible amount of pain and barely made it through. Hook us out, hook us out, duck down divers, and action, panic, panic! <laughs> Gunner, rifle! Panic, 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 cut! Very good, magnificent, good, good, winner. Just as you're about to die, they come in and they put something in your mouth and take you forever to some place where you could actually surface. If I survived, Winona survived, the stuff looks great. I actually was really surprised with myself. I was, you know, I was kind of proud. Everyone's done a really great job. We should all give yourself a hand for that. The visual and creature effects in the Alien movies conjure up sighs of disbelief and screams of terror. For Alien Resurrection, the Oscar-winning team of Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. return for the third time to thrill and chill audiences with their alien creations. I've worked with Tom Woodruff and Alec Gillis now for three pictures. They do the creature effects, and Tom, in fact, is often the guy in the suit. Let's get the style going. Action. 
we started doing uh, sketches and paintings of the various creatures and incarnations of the creatures and ultimately we went through a sculpture phase. In the cloning process, Ripley is uh, the number eight clone, the first clone that became successful, and the earlier seven stages are all kept in a laboratory setting. We see the new incarnation of Ripley, the cloned Ripley, discover this about herself when she sees containers full of failed experiments, failed attempts to clone her. This is the alien egg. Uh, what we did, based upon Jean-Pierre's request, was that we gave it a lot more points of movement. We have uh, body movement through this section. Uh, we have the inner petals here all undulate and, and uh, uh, flex. Is that a goddamn trap? Face huggers and the eggs um, are staples from the uh, from the previous films. Careful, Burke. We had full mechanical face huggers, which were operated by several puppeteers off screen, working levers to make the fingers move. And that allowed us to get nice shots of the creatures scuttling out of the eggs as they opened up. This time we see a little bit more of the chest burster uh, than we have in the past. The chest burster is surgically removed from Ripley early on in the film, and it's a fetal chest burster. Now they brought it out of you. Not all the way out. The Viper Pit was important because it was something that we had never seen before, but it was always sort of in your mind, like, where would these aliens take Ripley if they ever got a hold of her? And this was a 20 by 20 foot set that was a living sculpture. I think at one point we must have had 25 or 30 puppeteers underneath. In some cases, they were people that were just under there holding part of the, of the foam sculpture and moving it, undulating it to keep it alive. <laughs> The most important feature of the alien is the slime, the slime on his body and the drool that comes out of his mouth. And we would put probably close to a quarter inch of the slime all over the alien, and it would pick up oh, the most amazing highlights and just bring the whole suit to life. Okay, what about that? You'll see uh, creatures that are more realistic than what you've seen before. You'll see them as characters and not merely as killing machines. So, we're a fast learner. You will be blown away by the look of the film. I don't think creature effects have ever been able to come up with anything like this. That's it for the making of Alien Resurrection. A movie with all the screams, the terror, and the action of its predecessors, plus a whole lot more. So witness the resurrection. If you dare. I think the audience will be very scared. I would be. You're horrified and excited and on the edge of your seats. If we've done our job, that little adrenaline rush should be part of what's there. It's loaded with excitement. It is a thrill ride. The alien now has a character, and it's not just a threat. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be unlike any other movie. There are things in this movie that no one has ever seen before. I think we've made a great movie.